We cannot escape karma, action. So when we cannot escape action, so why not live with the karma yoga? So simple. If we cannot escape karma <coughs> or action, why not live with the karma yoga? So we have been understanding this karma yoga and today we will also understand one more secret. But first ask yourself, is your life changing? So how to understand is your life changing? Is it changing from unfavorable to favorable conditions in life? Do you feel light, relaxed, obsession, uh, obsession and cravings are gone and going? Mind now not running as fast as it was running. Body seems relaxed. Oh, by doing the karma yoga, yes. It is such a, <clears throat> people do not realize during the day everything seems organized. You are doing every action supported by calm, knowledge and the joy. You have dropped your laziness and craziness from the life. That means definitely we are doing, we are not hiding anything from our relations, family, etc. We are just as we are. So do you experience the life is more calm and relaxed and aware? Rest and calm in activity. Rest and calm in activity. Whatever you are doing, whether you are doing your professional activity, social activity, personal life, <coughs> You feel a sense of inner calmness. That should happen when we are doing karma yoga. Simply intellectually understanding will not do. It has to be applied. Do you think are you living wisely? That is also karma yoga. Are we living wisely? We have no choice but to act in our life. Life is action, action is life. So why not karma yoga? We never forget to live wisely. If we commit mistakes, we correct it immediately. Because we don't hide it behind our ego. We are going into the secret, you will understand. So you are ready to correct if you start thinking and speaking and acting wrongly. A seeker becomes a monk inside. Means the monk has no possession. No relation, nothing to work, but still he is working. <clears throat> that is the secret of karma yoga. We have been understanding one more point that we will understand today that what is karma yoga? Yoga means the inner state of the mind. Inner state of the mind guided by the discernment and dispassion and outer action, outer performance of an action guided by the inner state of the mind. That is what we say Karma Yoga is. 
why why to do that have you ever thought of it simple reason action is always in the present action is neither in the past or action is nor in the future do you see that just become aware <clears throat> every action is in the present so mind has to be there so a proper attitude and a state has to be there i have to live into that conscious awareness with reference to a particular action so when we are doing karma mind is somewhere else body is somewhere emotion is somewhere and that brings a problem in life do you see that you have to think contemplate and reflect that this action is always in present so i have to bring my mind to that action it means i have to live in the present guided by an attitude we have already talked about this attitude is discernment and discretion once we have clearly understood and we have contemplated and reflected you will find out that the goal of karma yoga is the freedom from the sins huh? all the religions talk about the sins so we see that these sins are unfavorable conditions in our life if i talk to you with an anger or reaction i accuse sin in my life because i feel bad about it later i have to repent it i have to say sorry so i have created an unfavorable condition same thing it happens in our family life in our professional life in our social life so result definitely is the freedom from the sins and purification of them then the mind remains totally free relaxed every time you wake up in the morning the mind is relaxed you are retiring to the bed the mind is relaxed and calm because you don't you don't touch those unfavorable conditions why because of the mental state why because of the mental state because it is guided by the discernment and the discretion but then what happens you start living wisely it does not mean that we do not commit those mental and emotional mistakes then we correct it so what is going to happen once you contemplate reflect you resolve that you are doing karma yoga you remove minimize unfavorable conditions from your life it is not the money cannot remove the unfavorable condition can you see that a huh? big house cannot remove the unfavorable condition you see that how beautiful uh, the the masters have the sense cannot be destroyed by having a big house or a big wealth or a car it has to be done inside suffering has to be destroyed so link this understand this any action that i perform with a attitude in the mind performed outside it has to purify the mind it will remove the unfavorable conditions it will remove the sins but our mind does not easily accept this principle easily does it you know, does not accept this principle no i have killed someone you know like you know i eat you know lot of misconception is there Oh, I am a non-vegetarian, so what will happen? I am accumulating the sin. 
we have a lot of those misconceptions. So now see, let us understand that how to remove those misconceptions from our life. When I throw a stone, it stops at a distance. Why it stops? We are trying to understand the secret behind the karma yoga. We drive, we all drive perhaps, we all drive. So I am reminding you, if there is no friction, if there is no opposite force, you cannot stop the car by simply your brake. Are you understand? You know, no, 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 I have, I have the most luxurious car and the brake is very strong, but if the unseen force what is the unseen force? Friction is not there. You cannot stop the car. Once you throw the stone, it will continue moving if there is no friction in there. Are you understanding that? That is simple. It's very simple. I'm using a simple analogy to understand. Activity and inertia are two opposite forces. Activity and inertia are two opposite forces. See, at present I am speaking. So, <laughs> you are patiently listening. You don't want to say anything. So, activity and inertia are two forces working against each other all the time. And these two opposite forces are known in Eastern wisdom or in yoga are Rajsik and Tamsik Guna. I'm making it very simple. It is a Rajsik Guna activity and Tamsik Guna is the inertia. I do active physical activity. After that you see the unseen force in your mind pops up. Let me relax. Let me relax. Whether you are extra intelligent, whether you use your mind or don't use your mind, extreme level of activity puts you into sleep and rest. Do you see that? Just see that, understand that. <coughs> so in Karma Yoga, these two opposite forces are constantly at work. You increase the activity, it will disturb your mind. You increase the inertia, means what? I become lazy. That also disturbs the mind. So then there is a third force that is balancing. And that balancing is Satoguna. Satoguna means right knowledge, proper knowledge, simple. Simple thing. Am I doing what I am supposed to do? Think in your mind and do it. Don't wait for oh, doubt and fear. What I am supposed to do? What is right and good? Do it. So how do you understand what is right and good for me? And what is right and good for everyone? So what happens? I ask my mind to move into the Satoguna and from the Satoguna I perform all my activity. I create a favorable condition I always purify the mind. I just gave an, one example. And it happens, you know, once a while, you know, it happens maybe one or two times every week. I want to see how my mind responds to a particular action that I performed in my family life, in my personal life, in my professional life, in my social life. That's all. So simple. 
Oh, just become aware. Oh, does the residue of that action remains? If I have performed a good action, ego. If there is some conflict remains with preference to likes and dislikes, impurity of the mind is there. Correct it. Are you getting it? It's subtle. That's why I laid a foundation of the Karma Yoga in the last few sessions. Are you clear? Unseen forces are always at work. That we say that inner attitude of the mind, the state of the being, or the state of the mind has to be right. What we are talking of, the balancing force between the inertia and between the activity. If there is an imbalance, oh, maybe reaction come, may return to you from the society, from your members of the family. Or if inertia is more, then you will not like to move into the right and proper activity. It may be a laziness, it may be an obsession, it may be a reaction that may return to you. We have understood at the physical level, it is very clear. Uh, the car will not stop if the friction is near. Car will not stop means activity, will not return to inertia. That is what do we mean by we have stopped the car in the garage. Huh? Now apply this into the body. <clears throat> ah, the moment say, you know, I have done one hour of jogging, now it's enough, let me calm down and relax. No, there is an unknowing, unseen force of inertia is there. Because of that, you were able to sit down and relax. Are you getting it? How simple. Unseen force. Otherwise, what will happen? You start jogging, you will never be able to stop if the force of inertia is not there in the world. How simple. Same thing. That is what we are talking about. Rajsik and Tamsik Guna. These two opposite forces, it has to be balanced. Ha, you are stuck. You are stuck. Stuck means at the emotional level. You hate somebody. Emotional dependence, that is your inertia at the emotional level. <laughs> Never stuck. Just become aware. Change it. Diffuse it. Are you understanding? Because it is, it is for my benefit. Be very selfish. No, diffuse it. Otherwise, we become selfish in a different way, in a negative way. Are you getting it? How beautiful it is. Now I don't want, just want to drop all the pressure from my, my head. No emotional dependence. That is inertia. And anger and hesitation reaction. This is your activity at the emotional level. I have to balance it. And emotional freedom comes by the knowledge. What is the fun? You know, I should get attached with any situation, if something happened, it's okay, it has happened, let me move forward, let me maintain that state of emotional poise and calm, no emotional dependence, no emotional dependence, inertia, no emotional reaction, anger and hesitation. Do you see that? <coughs> That's so. Rajogana and... No, intellectual level also? Intellectual level also. Yesterday this guy uh, was doing session with me. He said, no, I just want to talk to you for 10 minutes. The first question is that, <coughs> are there demons? I said, yes, for those level, uh, those, lev those people who are non-seekers, they create a sense of belief. They might have studied some books of religion. So there are a lot of explanation. 
and then once they read it, they create an image in their mind when there is an unfavorable condition, then there is a demon. So which level of a seeker you are? Now I just want to be clear. I said you are a highest level of a seeker. There is no demon, there is no ghost, there is no spirit. So at the intellectual level, I have to be very, very clear. I have, that is why I say you have to contemplate, you have to reflect again and again. Listen to this, pick up the principle. To the same guy, I gave one talk on, uh, on suffering and I said, this week you have to send me 100 questions. Then I will find out you are a seeker and this demon will not attack you. Because you have started thinking. Non-thinking Non-thinking means inertia. Inertia means obsession. So those, uh, those thoughts will continue to repeat and haunt your mind. But just play the secret. A simple play. But if you send me 100, 100 questions, I can promise you we will not be attacked by the demon. And that is inertia. No, 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 I have a demon. So we will talk about that later. So when we live, now see the, look at the opposite. When we live unwisely, when you live unwisely means what? Here is the inertia uh, in a pendulum and here is an activity. The mind is constantly moving to inertia, then activity, inertia, then activity. It does not stop in the middle. The balance is the satoguna. Balance is the knowledge. The moment I have a knowledge, that state of the mind. So you see that? You, now you are retired to the bed, you are lying down on the bed, and then what happens, you know, I want to sleep. Mind goes back to the activity. Again, I want to sleep. Going activity. What the serotonin and melatonin will do? Calm down the mind. Calm down the mind. No, we don't want to do that. Okay. No, you should not do that. So what we are trying to understand, the pendulum, just understand. One side is the inertia, the tamoguna, the other side is rajoguna. Balance is the knowledge, the satoguna. And it is all happening in the mind. First take care of that mind. You retire to the bed, I told you just now. So, But mind is not listening, it goes to activity again. Mind says, I, I'm, I want to sleep. But mind goes back again to the activity. So you are not able to sleep. No medication will work. That I know. So this is the meaning that I am living unwisely. I am committing mistakes to myself. And then I have to fall. Knowledge is the balance. Your fiancé is angry, you calm down. Now apply the same principle. When my honey is upset, I, I don't speak. Otherwise also, I remain silent. So there is no problem. It does not mean that you don't speak. Unless an opportunity comes with a proper mental state, you come out and speak. So activity and inertia are the two opposite forces. Understand. Inertia, whether you say inertia, you say friction. Huh? You can name it lot. You see, the, I can tell you if, you, if you go on reflecting it, you will find out. Oh, I'm feeling thirsty, so I took a glass of water. After that, the stomach wants to be in inertia. Don't overload it. Don't overeat. That is an indication of inertia. Are you getting it? I can give hundreds of examples. The more you reflect, 
you will find out, oh, it is all about just creating a balance in my life. And who creates a balance? The knowledge. Mental attitude. That mental attitude will come out in the form of an action. The life will be beautiful. Unfavorable conditions will draw. With anything in it. Maybe at present you may be thinking it is not possible. It is 100% possible. Inertia, activity and the knowledge. But why should we understand this? I'm happy with what I am. Because life is action. Action is life. Without action, I cannot live. There is no possibility. There is no possibility. Now, even if you say I'm the laziest person, but we are a human being, you have to stand up and go to the restroom. We are not animals. Did you understand? will not go to the restroom on the, on the bed. We are human beings. You have already done activity. So there are unconscious, conscious activity, physical activities. Without action, we cannot exist. Karma is life. Action is life. Life is action. So why not convert into Karma Yoga? But as you start doing the karma yoga, maybe one more session, I think, based on today's your ex today's experience that you share. The moment you start karma yoga into your daily life, the day, the, the time you wake up in the morning until you retire to the bed, You become consciously, you become, you feel that consciously you are a part of the existence. The mind expands. You have an experience of infinity, all pervasiveness. That is the greatest result you get by Karma Yoga. You enjoy a sense of freedom. When? Anywhere and everywhere. Otherwise, you know, you know we, we keep holding ourselves. We keep holding ourselves in our relationship. So what is the ultimate result of the Karma Yoga? You start experiencing you are a part of the existence. You feel a sense of all pervasiveness. Why? Because now your mind is understanding and doing all the actions with reference to the three forces. The force of the knowledge, the force of the activity, and the force of initiative. Can you ever say that I will accumulate the power of inertia inside my home? Not to be used by anyone? Friction is always there. Every bit. It cannot be personalized. Do you see that? Activity cannot be personalized. It is a part of the entire universe and the existence. There, where there is a change, there is an activity. So when you start doing the Karma Yoga, the mind starts becoming purified. And ultimately what happens? That knowledge. What knowledge? That all the three forces are constantly at work for me, for others also. So we start experiencing, we have a glimpse that these forces are all pervading and they are also working in me through my body, through my mind, through my intellect, through my ego. The life becomes beautiful. We understand what is this? What is this? unfavorable condition which people talk about the demons and the sins they are totally gone from your life 
That is the ultimate result. There are many more changes that takes place because once your mind is constantly and consciously aware of these three forces, I'm speaking activity, but then I stop for a while inertia in between the knowledge is there. So what happens? The more and more you immerse yourself into the karma yoga, there appears a silence in your mind. Because in that silence, you see all these three forces are at work. Because why? My mind is constantly chattering. It is chattering because of the ego. It says I have to do a lot. I have to work today. I have to do this. I have to rest. I have to relax. It is constantly chattering. So what happens? Because we merge with an existence, so the existence takes care of our all the life. It is such a beautiful state, one enters into it. Think of this, contemplate and reflect. Write to me if you have any doubt. Now close your eyes. Close your eyes. Can we say Karma Yoga is skill in action? Yes. Skill? Mind recognizes. Ah, yes. Mind recognizes. Being comfortable. Now, when I say being comfortable, recognize the skill by which the mind knows this being comfortable. Don't you think that inertia or tamoguna is negative? No, we need all the three. In being comfortable, the mind experiences the inertia in the body. I've already talked about it. The mind has millions of the thoughts and that makes me lose awareness of the body. But now I say being comfortable, so I look at the body from the top of the head to the toes, looking, so I see the comfort in the inertia. Is inertia not a steadiness in the body? Yes. Do you see that? We're moving at a subtle level. So once we move from inside to outside, means what? From the mind, a proper attitude, mind says, no, no, you have to be comfort. Comfort means, you know, a sense of steadiness. But do I feel it? Yes, I feel it through the sensation. Ah. Anytime, anywhere. <coughs> and then being carefree. Now look at the being carefree. So when the mind is constantly inviting because of its unconscious, habitual, impulsive state, lot of thoughts, that is the meaning that, you know, I'm wondering, my mind is wandering. So what we say, we say move into the balance. What is the balance? No thought belongs to me. They are separate from me. I'm carefree. You're already a higher seeker. When you experience that you are a witness to all the thoughts that enters into the mind, unwelcome, uninvited, stranger thoughts, you have no reaction or response, you see? But I said, no reaction. Right, say, gun activity, no response, no inertia. 
you see it separate and different from you. The journey to the Buddha's mindfulness starts from here. We have, so people, they just say, oh, let me focus on the breath, it will happen. Nothing will happen. It does not happen. So that's why I stress on that I have to become a seeker inside, my friends. And I, we discussed and now you all understand that we have millions and millions of unwelcome, uninvited thought entering into the mind. So when the thought enters into the mind, I recognize. So what do I recognize? Those thoughts that I don't want. So why not replace with the other thoughts that I want? That is what the rule of the mantra is. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham swastir bhavatu <clears throat> Do you remember I said recitation, then meaning, and then the knowledge? And I've explained maybe I think 20 different ways. You pick up your, just see, does your mind recall any one of it? Meaning is simply, may there be well-being for all. So that recall is natural, even without the thought. That is, what is that? Knowledge. So you are putting the mind in between the activity and the inertia. Whenever you need activity, you go for it. Through the knowledge. Whenever you need inertia, go for it. Through the knowledge. That's what we do. You stop the car. You run the car. You park the car. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Let there be, may there be peace for all, let there be peace for all. My friends, you recognize you go for the meaning, meaning is clear, so then the knowledge, you see meaning and the knowledge, I am differentiating between the two. I may have a lot of information inside my head, but until the information is realized through contemplation, it does not become a knowledge. Oh, so... May there be peace for also peace is a common factor. Everyone desires for the peace, and I'm also desiring for the peace. So peace is my essential nature. The moment I moment you even think in unfavorable condition, your mind is ready. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Puranam Wholeness, completeness I am seeking completeness. Everyone is seeking completeness. 
but this sense of completeness cannot be attained by anything outside. So it is within me. The moment the mind starts moving within, it starts realizing the sense of completeness is within. You have one trillion dollar in your account. Would you feel a sense of completeness? You just think. It does not mean that we don't we should not earn. They have the most beautiful things outside you. You always feel the sense of incomplete. That is the message. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu May there be auspiciousness for all. This auspiciousness is nothing but awareness of the mind in the knowledge. neither in the inertia nor in the activity. You wake up in the morning and keep lying on the bed. Inertia. Just an example. The knowledge, what the knowledge says, Knowledge says to your mind, why don't you wake up? Get out of the bed. Knowledge always, but we ignore it. So we, you ignore it means what? Inertia, force of inertia is much more than the knowledge. Then what? I become a non-seeker. You don't create a conflict in your life. That is the secret of the Karma Yoga. Let us start breathing quick and short breath, maintaining the steadiness in the body, looking deep inside the heart in the space, dropping Om Shanti, dropping gently Om Shanti, doing the breathing quick and fast, and the third layer, body remains steady. Continue. Body inertia. See that breath activity and the mind. That is what I always wanted to convey to you all, which has taken a couple of sessions before. Continue.
and strive this. I believe you all are seekers in fact up. Do you see the body? Inertia. That's how we separate it and we find the real self. Breath was activity. And the mind, mind keeps on saying, oh, Om Shanti. Knowledge, knowledge does not change. And that we will discover, look deep inside the forehead, in the space or emptiness. Pick a point in the space inside the forehead. And at that point you start hammering mentally. Again you check it. Activity, inertia and Om Shanti, Om Shanti mentally. No movement of the lips and the tongue. Om Shanti, 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 mentally. As quick, as fast as possible. You already know Om Shanti, what it means. But as quick, as fast as possible. Activity. But in fact, in that activity, there is Om Shanti which is knowledge. Just contemplate that reflective mind. So you are understanding a very subtle points in each and every practice. Om Shanti 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 You are doing it mentally. So you need not to worry about controlling the breath also. It's purely a mental. And that mental means the mind does not wander. So you are consciously deeper and deeper into yourself. And that naturally keeps the body in inertia. Because mind withdrawn inside. Om Shanti 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 Whatever the way you do it. And yeah, look inside the heart, in the space, same point, any point in the space inside the heart. You are aware the body, if I say there is one layer in inertia, other layer, that is we say the mind, we say now the mind you have to be in a, oh, you, you have been wandering, no issue, wander, how? Drop Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Shanti. Where? Deep inside the heart. We are supporting the mind. But with the knowledge, that is the only difference. And it goes a long way in our journey of self discovery.
Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Remember, your mind may pick up any other thought with a past impression. You have to return to Om Shanti. Now stop this for a while. Thus I believe you have understood the subtle love, the inertia, the knowledge and the activity. And because you recognize that kind of a separation inside makes you absorbed into meditation. It has nothing to do with me or anyone. Existence is constantly at work. Now look deep inside the belly button, the space, pick a point in this space and keep on hammering Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Om Shanti 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 It is quick, fast and loud and that is happening And stop it now. Another subtle understanding as you move the mind. 
in the cave of your heart singing Om. What you are wanting, you are wanting is a seeker, the knowledge means the balance between the inertia and the activity, sat raju and tamogana, and what I used to say, the mind seemingly stops. You drop shanti, leave everything. So when you leave everything, sometimes you share an experience, a sense of absorption, and other experiences. That is the story. So you remain in that knowledge. So the time comes even when the body moves Mind remains in the state of knowledge. So what is that knowledge? I'm not the body. Let the body move. So there is no attachment. There is no identification. Same thing with the mind. Same thing with the breath. So that mind is sad to have transcended the world outside. that me and mine is not there. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. inside the palms to return to accumulate to understand what was your experiences so that you can share it so once you are aware fully with eyes open inside the palms 
bring the hands down. We will understand, we will share our experiences now. How are you, Stephen? Where is your niece? Oh, sorry, nephew. Hey, my nephew. Yeah. I don't know. Very good. Um, I don't know where Sam is. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just in complete peace. Um, just very settled, absorbed. Um, no thoughts. Um, calm. And um, it's good. Feel good. Good. You see that? Uh, you all heard. Now convert his expression uh, in these three forces. He said calm, coming from the knowledge, that is an activity. Then again, there is a pause, inertia. Did you see that? Inertia, expression, knowledge is guided. Knowledge is guiding both inertia and the activity. That is the secret of karma yoga. So we have to go to that subtler level. Are you getting it? What I'm saying? That's subtler. It means that I have to live into that level of awareness. How are you, David and Jerry? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, very, very good meditation. Uh, I love the pendulum analogy and the inertia discussion at the beginning. Um, the uh, fast breathing for me was, a, I, I um, struggled a little bit. I was, you know, and so finally I just let go. And for the rest of my meditation, it was just, I was just at peace. And it, I just felt this oneness on everything. There was no, I heard all your words. There was no attachment or any thoughts or anything. It was a very, very deep, calming and quiet. Beautiful. What a beautiful state, beautiful. How are you, Jerry? Good, so thank you. Um, yeah, the, the meditation tied right back to the lesson with the, um, with the activity and then the mantra, there was that opposing, you know, well, there was that constant. Yeah. And then with the activity and the inertia, there was that pendulum, like David was saying. And that reminds me of when I was in nursing, when I worked emergency, and we were so well trained that when the emergency came in, we just did what we needed to do. And it wasn't like, you know, you didn't take a second to go read the book <laughs> yeah. or anything like that, right? You just applied the knowledge. Not easy. And it's the same thing in our, in our daily living. We just apply this knowledge and then we know what to do. Beautiful. Yeah, she rightly said knowledge applied in activity, knowledge applied in inertia. Oh, I have taken care of this patient, so let me now calm down. Done. What needs to be done? That is beautiful. How are you, Ivo? Uh, so I'm good. Uh, it's like uh, there was a distance between me and the thought and the body. So in that case, uh, what was happening that whenever something new is also coming, na, I feel it's okay. It's a new thing. It's a new information. And I can accept it and then come back to my original state. Yeah. So it was calm, it was relaxing and peaceful. Beautiful. Because his mind is approaching this meditation totally in a different way. But that makes a sense. Yeah, that makes a sense. That is the role of a guru. The teacher says, no, you have to follow like me. You should have this experience. That that's a beautiful. How are you, Brandy? <laughs> Good morning. I'm okay, thank you. I admit I'm still. Um, well, I'm not still. I'm in a phase where I'm really identifying a lot with the mind and the body. But was really was really useful during the meditation with the combined with the lesson today is that I realized that I have a really majestic mind um, because I've been pretty physically inert in my transition, and I that's where I'm kind of out of balance. I need to like stretch and go for a walk because I think that if I could, you know, to calm my mind down, I need to get my body moving a little. 
so I, I had that realization, which I think will be helpful. But Dre, um, uh, thinking about what you said, there was a TED talk that I saw a clip of the other day, and it was an ER trauma doctor, and she was talking about she never uses the phrase crazy busy, and she basically described what you're talking about. She's like, because we go in and we have a system of triage, and she's like, and that's how you need to handle your stress. I'll see if I can find it and send it to you because it's I think it really relates to what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful. Understand simply that that principle of inertia. You see that? Can you maintain your awareness while speaking? Inertia, that is a pause. Activity, that is an expression. But both are guided by the knowledge, not by the unconscious, habitual, impulsive, instinctive mind. You are already doing karma yoga. That is what he explained. How are you, Terry? I don't hear you. I don't hear you. In the meantime, let me. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yes. Ashokwa. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm having a little trouble breathing, so the meditation helps me to bring some calmness into my body, and that helps me to achieve some clarity about the lesson, which I found. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I really appreciate this lesson. Very good. I appreciate your mind who has accepted this lesson. Yeah. Yes. I, I want to say more, but I, I can't. No, no. Need, need, need not to be. I can see your body remain totally steady. During but now, now it's uh, shake, shake, shaking. So yeah, yeah, I now it is shaking. The balance. Also, so, so if our awareness, or you can say, if our mind is totally absorbed in the knowledge that pendulum will move to the middle. It will not go to the activity. It will not lead to unconsciousness. And mm -hmm. I can say that will help you transcend these symptoms. Thank you. But we have to work. Keep on working. Yes. yes. We yeah. How are you, Cheers. Rakesh? Go ahead. Rakesh, how are you? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sorry for the uh, stillness or body distance, whatever we call it. And, uh, the, the mantra is in the emptiness throughout. Yeah. So very deep, very, very soothing. Good. Very good, very deep. That's really good. You know, body was totally still inertia. You see in meditation, these three forces are always at work. So we have to redefine what is stillness, what is silence, that we are going to do in the following session. So are you Anastasia? Thank you very much for this lesson it's, and practice. It's very helpful. It's, I'm, it's really important for me to find and understand this balance. And I was feeling like in between feel uh, and didn't feel my body and today I saw a bunch of different faces like one face changed to another and uh, it was very deep and calm 
Very deep and calm. Very good. That's good. How are you, Ashok? Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Very peace and calm, sir. And very good analogy you use. You use always uh, I mean, new uh, concepts, new things. So that's very good. Um, because, yes, we have, to, we have to reach to the highest. So I start using... I start explaining first at the physical level, then mind, then subtler level of the mind, then ultimate concept. Because if I, huh? if I explain the highest one, it will not be able to. Your mind will oppose it. Mm -hmm. So you are right. Yes, you are right. So any question? Thank you. We'll meet again on witness, uh, Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, everyone. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. Namaste.